Hello and welcome to another development log of Project 3rd IVR. It has been a while since the last development log and there are a lot of new things that I can show you. So first of all, let's start with this character model. Uh, the reason why I changed it is because uh, this one has a twist bone. It's uh, not properly set up at the moment. When I ex overextend the, uh, the wrist joint, you can see that we have this volume decrease. So that is uh, the phenomena that the twist bone of the forearm uh, is supposed to fix actually. It works in this, in this uh, range, but as soon as you overextend it, I don't know, it, it flips upside down and then for some reason it doesn't work anymore. But in this range it works really, really well. Really well. That's what I wanted to say. So basically what the twist bone does, it, it twists the uh, forearm and that's why you have less twist on the wrist and, that, and, and then it will look a little bit more natural. Yeah, I think that's it. So uh, that's it with this character model. Also, I, uh, this character model has uh, the fingers rigged in a way that uh, looks a lot better. So as you can see, this is a fist. I think it looks... Uh, twist bone doesn't really work. Uh, as you can see, the, the fist looks a lot more natural than... Oh, yeah, for some reason it gets stuck. I don't really know why. Uh, but the, uh, the, f the finger is flexing. It looks a lot better than uh, the previous model. And I think the whole texture thing just looks a little bit better. Yeah, so that's it for this character model. Also, I rebuilt the complete... Uh, the whole... Um, finger collision thing. So in previous versions uh, you have this where the finger stops when when uh, it collides with something and then it extends or it doesn't extend. So I rebuilt this and now it's a, lit, a lot more customizable. So uh, yeah that's a good thing I think. And as you can see it looks really nice with these. Uh, let's grab any object really quick. Let's say we take this object and now, as you can see, the fingers, they adapt to their, uh, to the topology of the gun. Very nice. So, uh, that's uh, something that I've rebuilt completely. Also, the uh, snapping for hand poses is now smooth. In uh, previous versions, the snapping would be immediately so you would be in range and then you just snap into that position and that's it. Now it's smooth, so as you can see, oop, it moves in that direction. It's really quick, but uh, it, it looks a little bit more smooth when you do a lot of motions with uh, the hands. So that's really nice. Uh, yeah, one more thing that I've done with the hands is... Uh, I've put the thumb uh, not only on the primary button because uh, the right primary button is taken by jumping and the other one is taken by slow-mo and uh, that's why I changed it and now you, when you uh, I don't know have the trigger at 80% and the grip at 80% then uh, the thumb comes with comes uh, is starts to flex so uh, yeah, so you only have to pull the trigger and the grip and then the thumb will move accordingly so you have a proper fist. I think that makes sense. And uh, yeah, the last thing that I can show you uh, regarding, the hands, regarding the hands is that the hand poses have uh, improved. In previous versions, uh, the hand would just be attached to the object. So for example, uh, you would put your hand like this with the fingers penetrating the object and then it would just attach that way and that looked really bad. And now I changed it. I'm shooting a ray cast from the palm and then it checks the normal and then yeah, automatically snaps into a position that, I mean, that doesn't really make sense in this situation, but it looks a lot better than this. So uh, yeah, I think that's really nice. Also, this has two ray casts, so you also detect, can detect these edges. So uh, you have this normal 
Um, a normal vector is basically the direction from the surface, just upright from the surface, so like this. So I'm shooting a ray cast and uh, searching the direction from the surface, which is that way. And for this surface, for example, it's that way. And, uh, but there's a problem when you have the edge, you have actually two normals that you want to, uh, that you want to consider for your, for your hand root snapping. And that's why I'm shooting two ray casts, one uh, in this position and one in this position. And then I'm taking an average from it. So I not only can grab the, this surface and this surface, but also these something in between that makes it look a lot more natural. Yep, so uh, that's it for the hand poses. And it works really well. So, I mean, there are situations obviously where the fingers penetrate the object, especially on small objects like these. So if I have a random pose, let's throw this in the air and catch it. As you can see, that hand pose doesn't really make sense. But uh, if you just grab it, it uh, kind of makes sense every time. And with the objects a little bit uh, larger, it tends to make sense as well. Yeah, and you always can grab these edges. That always looks relatively uh, natural. I mean, I don't think you could grab an object like this in real life, but uh, yeah, you gotta start somewhere. And, and this works as well. So uh, yeah, this is one kilogram, really light. This is 10 kilograms. This is, I think it was 100. Wow, that's really heavy. So you can see this on my legs. My, my, the, the legs start to bend because it's so heavy. And uh, this one, I think it's 200 kilos. It's actually hard to move down this, uh, this table. Yep. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, now you can see my legs are starting to bend as well. Let's try to throw this. Yeah, so uh, I think I need to add some heavy objects to the game because uh, all this heavy, heavy lifting stuff feels very uh, natural. So not natural, but uh, realistic, I would say. Yeah, so is there anything else I can show you? I don't know. Hand poses, yeah, so it also, it works on all kinds of objects, so this is the default. So, uh, as you can see, I can grab whatever I want. It almost makes sense every time. So it doesn't really matter if I just grab on it. I mean, you couldn't do this in real life, but at least it doesn't look horrible, like in previous versions. Also, uh, yeah, grabbing the edges. I mean, that is not optimal. However, I think it looks, most of the time, it looks good enough. Also, for objects like these, for this bat, that have a, a start and an end, I made uh, this hand pose snapping that it always, um, that you always grab this pole. So there's an imaginary pole set up, and, you, and the hand pose always snaps in that direction. So if you would try to grab like this, it would automatically snap into a, uh, uh, it would automatically start to align with this uh, with this imaginary line. Yeah, and that works really well so far. Sometimes it, uh, yeah, does this. As you can see, it it starts to move in another direction. I don't really know uh, how to fix that yet, but it already feels a lot better than the previous versions. So if I would grab the uh, bed out of the air. It makes sense. Makes sense as well. Also makes sense. Grab it from the floor. Makes sense, makes sense, makes sense. That does not make sense. Yeah, but most of the time it looks okay. So, and there is something else that I've been doing. And this is uh, working on, the, on new enemies. So I have a, a button right here. And if I push the button, there will be a drone spawned and these drones are uh, completely physics based so I could throw them in this direction and then uh, as you can see these drones are targeting an orientation 
and they also target the player so I could throw this in this direction and move somewhere over here and now as you can see it's going for the door and it's starting to target me and I thought this was this would be a nice enemy type uh, because uh, if you have like a building a security building or something like that and then you have these drones coming out of the uh, out of the vents the ventilation things that would be uh, I think that would be very cool and the idea is that these drones explode once they are close to your head just like this so that's what it looks like if they explode and you can also uh, shoot them down or you could uh, yeah, use a bat or a gun or something like that just to smash them but uh, yeah, maybe I should lower the threshold a little bit. Yeah, I think that would be very cool to have in the game. Also, I've been thinking about another drone that has a uh, gun attached to it, which is a little bit larger, of course, and then starts to shoot. I think this would be a very flexible type of AI to have for the game. Yeah, is there anything else? Yeah, I've been starting to work on the final uh, on the final campaign and story mode. So I think I know what story I want to implement and I just need to start working on the levels now. So that's it for today's development log. See you in the next development log and say ciao!